This Chinese guy has trouble dating Chinese women, but no trouble dating other types of women. What's going on here? Let's discuss. Oh my goodness, this type of question is kind of controversial, but you know, different Asian community, they operate differently. Let's take a look at this Reddit post. No luck with Chinese girls versus to other types of Asian girls. Andrew, he's 26 years old. He's a Chinese American. He's 5'11". He says he's good looking. He said he's gotten with plenty of other types of women in the Bay Area, including white women or white European women. However, Chinese girls do not seem to like Chinese guys. And he's just asking, is this just a me thing? Is this a Bay Area thing? Or does it seem like, of all the Asians, Chinese women prefer Chinese men the least? Mm, all right, guys, I need to get it. This sounds kind of controversial. I am not saying, we're not saying at all that there's that all Chinese women do not prefer Chinese guys. I think we've met many who do, but... This is a discussion that a lot of guys have had, and so I think it's worthy to look into. Right. Not that it's true on a blanket statement. It might be case by case, but we got to look into it. Well, I'll say this is a bit controversial to talk about. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Check out Smile Last Sauce on Amazon.com right now. So, Dave, I guess the question is people are looking for reasons because there has been amongst Chinese guys, there has been- a ABC a guys, let's be honest, because this is a different discussion, like FOB yes. to ABC. Yeah, so, so what this guy said in his post, he did say uh, women born in China, like immigrant Chinese women, you know, FOBs, when maybe they came here for college or for high school, they are more uh, open to dating him as an ABC, but he feels like other ABC women, American-born Chinese women, do not prefer a Chinese guy. Maybe they're dating other Asians or non-Asians, as we know. But here's the issue. A lot of guys are like, who cares if you're getting women of other ethnicities? Because he lists out Viet, Burmese, Filipino, Korean, blah, 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 blah. But he leads, uh, ends with this last sentence. I really want somebody who deeply understands Chinese culture. That's why this is an issue to me in terms of like long-term marriage. Right. All right. So guys, we're going to go into some reasons that we found using some of the comment section. So these are not all the reasons I know for sure, but these are possible reasons on why it feels like Chinese women don't, American born Chinese women don't always prefer Chinese guys. All right, point number one, Asian self-love is the most difficult or complicated when you're Chinese. So you're saying Asian self-love for men and women. <clears throat> yes. I just think that other smaller groups, they have more of a clear narrative, whereas Chinese, the group is so large, there's so many different immigration waves, the whole narrative of being Chinese, do you love it, do you hate mm -hmm. it, what are the pros and the cons, it's so amorphous, it makes everybody arrive at a different conclusion. So the guys oftentimes, Andrew, they're possibly, in my opinion, looking at the pros of being Chinese, I think sometimes the women tend at list look at the cons mm, okay so basically i think being chinese is kind of weird <laughs> because you're an east asian but you're not a hyper cool elevated east asian like japanese or koreans that's not how you're perceived right it's by like other people. you're like maybe viewed as the grandmother to those cultures but not the modern cool modern world iteration mm -hmm. of east asian confucianism or buddhism or whatever it is and then andrew you're not necessarily i guess bonded by situations like southeast asians okay right like right which uh, like if you're vietnamese uh or cambodian you guys uh most people have a very similar pathway to getting here refugee, with a lot of struggles struggle. yes that yes yes, yes yes so and you don't have any religion or belief system okay because especially if this guy's like mainland chinese andrew uh more atheist right right so and or and then and then the only belief systems that people would point out, which I don't think are true, but but if you would, it'd be like either communism or being anti-communist. But those are political systems. That's not a ethno-religious status, okay? That for example, like Indians have, uh, but they could be very like provincialist. So I guess what I'm saying is, when it comes to self-love, it can either be driven by pain or some sort of elevation. But I feel like the Chinese Americans community's view on itself can be very lukewarm. Mm. But I guess that's self-love as in self-pride too. Like there's, like they just seem less prideful of their culture and of maybe their men. Yes, because it's like very tit for tat. Maybe you hear a good thing from the past and then you hear a bad thing now and a good thing and then a bad thing. It makes you have very ambivalent, ambiguous feelings about yourself as a community. Basically what I'm saying is you don't even have a strong feeling about yourself. Ah, uh. Moving on to point number two, Andrew. I know that this is the way you worded it. 
but it kind of plays off at number one, but it's, it's an extension of that. They're just not raised to be passionate enough about each other. Yeah. What, what, what does that mean? Well, I mean, I think that, uh, like, let, we'll, we'll play some clips from these comedy clips of people talking about who are the most toxic Asians, and you'll see that Chinese never rank at the top of toxicity. Well, well they're usually actually quite low. Right. Chinese men and Chinese women are considered less toxic than Vietnamese, Filipino, blah, 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 the other types of Asians. Run the clips. What do you guys think is the most toxic race? This isn't my perspective from my friend's perspective. I think Viet will probably have to be up there, uh, especially the ABG ones. I can make a lot of excuses for them, but I just feel like they always feel like the grass is greener somewhere else because they're bad as f and nothing is ever enough. On the bottom, Paige, you were good. I'm waiting for you to be great. And next, Kendall. You didn't stick out to me. Next is Brooke. Next, Nia. You're third on the pyramid. You were third overall high score. And Mackenzie. And on top of the pyramid, going three for three, once again, is Maddie. Today we're ranking Asian girls from least toxic to most toxic. On the bottom we got Chinese. They're quite practical. I've never heard of toxic Mongolians or Thais. The Japanese. It's all about respect. But inside there. Next is Korean, Malaysian, around the Koreans, because Cambodians, the Philo. The top one, Viet girls. They are psycho, but in a good way, but psycho. And I'm very afraid. So that is so great, right? To not be toxic. That is like one of the most desirable traits. You don't yep. want to be toxic. So, so, but so why is this OP saying that? No, no, no. Because the being, low toxicity rating is good. Being non-toxic is good in a way, but toxicity means that there's high pings, that there's close relationships, that there's a lot of interactions with each other to be toxic. You cannot be toxic to someone you are not close to. So Filipinos, they daily each other, whatever you could say, make the jokes, they talk to each other, Vietnamese, toxic within the community. You're always toxic within the community, right? So I'm saying if Chinese are not as close, then they can't be as toxic, right? So what I mean is that toxicity is a double-edged sword, right? It's, it's bad, I meant not double-edged sword, but it has pros and cons where on one side, it's bad because you're doing wrong to each other, but on the other side, it shows that you're highly passionate about each other because you need passion to even be toxic and care about each right. other. Right, you're saying the glue can sometimes man it's felt manifest itself into toxicity, but when there is no glue, there's no close interpersonal feeling to even develop toxicity. Yes, yes, to have hate, you must have love. Uh, like, and... I think this goes back to a video we just did called Why Don't Chinese Trust or Help Each Other a Lot. Please watch that video. I think it actually has a lot to do with the explanations in this Right, right, video. right. You're saying the OP might be just pointing out his own self-interested symptom of something that's much larger at a systemic core. Mm -hmm. Point number three, Andrew. Chinese men that only want Chinese women are chasing a smaller volume of women since many Chinese women are open to seeing what else is out there from other groups. So that is going to create a logistical imbalance in leverage in, within relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just the supply and the demand curve, right? This is literally, you could plot this out in terms of microeconomics 101. Right. Right, right, right. Yeah, I would say that that's true. Um, because I would say this, I think that Chinese American women... Like we said, guys, is everybody's different. It depends on your family coaching and stuff like that. They're more just like, oh, what is like the best thing that's out there? I don't need the guy to be Chinese. Mm. Whereas I think like Korean women or even Viet women or they they may more have that um, weighing on their decision like pie fa like that pie slice that weighs on the pie chart of decision making is a larger slice. Yeah, I mean, I think listen, a lot of women <clears throat> who marry out or date out of their group. I think that they don't need any more of their culture. I think a lot of them feel comfortable in the amount of culture they already have. Like maybe a lot of the Chinese girls who date out, they already know some Chinese, so they don't need to speak with their partner in Chinese or they, you know, they already feel like I don't need to be around that culture anymore. And I think that that also, this also relates to how sometimes esoteric and unappealing traditional Chinese culture seems where it kind of, sometimes repels people, men and women, the guys who can leave and are like, yo, I'm too cool for this stuff. I'm not that Chinese. But I think women feel that 
maybe more often or they have more options to leave. Yeah, because it is true, and, and without getting into the history of it, Chinese culture is the oldest and the most from the way old days. Like, if you basically made me point out what is modern day Chinese culture, it's way more difficult to explain than what is the modern culture of another type of Asia. Right, 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 right. Because it's more stuck in the past and more linked to the past. And you could take pride in that and say, we created a lot of the past. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter in terms of a modern day application. That is uh, the outcome of the algorithm. Uh, point number four, this guy says that this... Uh, that he feels that Chinese women, when they are in a relationship, demand f more from the men that they are with compared to other types of Asian women. Yeah, so this is obviously a blanket statement. I don't fully agree, but I think that we can say generally Chinese women are pretty hardworking. They're, uh, they come from a high achievement culture, which are men and women. Right, Chinese guys and Chinese women both come from this high achievement culture, but the almost more, the almost the most achievement centric. Yes, possibly. of of the Asians, I would say almost the most uh, formal achievement centric as far as money making and education. But other people would call it myopic or narrow, you know, not holistic, whatever. Perhaps, right, imbalance. Yeah, I think so. So I think that when Chinese come from a achievement oriented background, they want what is best. This goes back to the other point, but they want what is best. Maybe you could use the word hypergamy when it marries or whatever it is. Or maybe just they just want the best thing that they can have. And the best thing doesn't have to be a Chinese guy. Right, right, right. If their metrics identify somebody in another group, et cetera, et cetera. And it's not that every, everybody can make their own decisions in life, right? But the Chinese culture seems particularly like looking for the best opportunity absolutely possible with no, nothing sort of like uh, holding that desire back. You know what I mean? It's sort of like the Wendy Deng thing. I'll say this. I also think that there's other things such as the one child policy and the breakdown of patriarchy in China. If you look at Japan and Korea, they're just starting to break down patriarchy this decade. Right. In China, I think it fell apart like 30 or 40 years mm. ago. So you're seeing, you know what I mean? Just like a different timeline of the breakdown of patriarchy. And I think that there's also, if you really want to get granular, Andrew, there's this other thing called like mental testosterone. I think the Chinese women have a ton of mental testosterone, henceforth why you have people like Lisa Su, the CEO of AMD, who is a billionaire. Mm. To be honest, I mean, we, that's like a whole nother video. Um, also, I think the Chinese women are really, really independent. I think they're taught to be that way. I don't think that the way the women and the men are coached typically is that different. Like, I'm not saying I can't speak on everybody, but I do believe other Asians occasionally coach the men or invest in the men and women differently. I do not think there is any difference in a Chinese family between the investment between the male and the female siblings. Um, what else we got here? Point number five, Andrew. This is, by the way, not my words. This is just, we're just pulling this from the comment section. This is a, uh, some food for thought here. Chinese women may be more dissatisfied with their own men and want to be more Western than other types of Asian women where their entire culture has westernized to the point where they feel like their men are sufficiently westernized. Yeah, so I can kind of see what they're saying here in the sense that I think, though, that this is not really on the Chinese women as much at this point where it's like, listen, guys, you got to look at the parents and you got to look at the guys and how we're raised sometimes and how Chinese men are taught and I think that a lot of Chinese parents don't do the best job of instilling pride in their women and sons in the daughters and sons where you're saying just all across the board yeah just all across the board where it's like the men the guys are not raised to be as uh uh, uh I guess westernized or assimilated or they're not forced to be or they're not expected to be and so they don't and therefore it doesn't make them more appealing to American people. Right, right, right. I would say more on the sociality end because it is true. I'll, I'll keep it real with you guys. Being raised in a Chinese family from the age of 25 to 50, that specific age range that I'm referring to, the OP is 26, so he falls in that range, unfortunately. It's like, it's like if you got good grades and you make somewhere in the six figures of income and you have like some sort of steam profession, it's almost like you have no other social responsibilities or like community responsibilities beyond that. Right, you don't have to be pushed to be a socialized man uh, and you don't have to be, you're not gonna necessarily be pushed to be a leader. Just as long as you accomplish those things, sometimes your family is satisfied. And sometimes that's the fault of the family where it's like, 
dude, like you still need these guys to be well adapted and like, you know, uh, 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 assertive people, you know? Right, right, right. It's definitely not like charisma or being charming or anything. It's definitely not a metric that is maybe possibly even tracked at all. Point number six, Andrew. Chinese women who like Chinese men may want a guy who can speak Chinese. So a lot of ABCs, they're already precluded from that group as well. Uh, yeah, so this works different ways. I feel like for American-born Chinese women who can speak the language, uh, I feel like they don't really usually care as much as if they were born there. So here's, I, I've heard both that uh, there's plenty of fob women who date ABC guys and vice versa. You know, I think, so I think it works out too. But it does seem like ABC, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, for, for lack of a better word, guys, first generation, newly arrived, like foreign passport holder Chinese women like dating Chinese guys more than ABC women do. Would you agree with that? Yeah, like, possibly. I mean, I'll tell you this. This is a, a insight from my dating background is that of all the Chinese girls that I've dated, uh, some ha which have been like fobs or born in Asia and then came over here, but also some ABCs, I've always been probably the worst at Chinese. Like of the two, I'm always the most American. I'm the most Americanized. So what I feel like I'm getting is that the girls that I've dated, the Chinese girls that I've dated, have always been more, a little bit more Chinese than me. So if so you, you- So you're saying they possibly were looking for a mer more Americanized significant other. Yes, so if they do look for a more Americanized significant other, whether they're a immigrant or a American born, then who is more American? Well, if they can't find an ABC guy that- that appeals to them, then it's going to be like a white guy or a non-Asian. Right, right, right. And then, or, or just a different type of Asian that's more Americanized. Yeah, maybe and a you Filipino can guy, you can Filipino argue, guy, Korean guy. Whatever. I would say Filipino guys and Korean guys are both more Americanized on average than your average ABC guy. Yeah. And, and yeah, that yeah, yeah. is a function of culture. And we can get into that and how who's steeped in Confucianism or who can mix and match and let go of this. Or maybe it's a religious thing because Filipinos and Christians are, uh, I mean, uh, Filipinos and Koreans are more Christian, which gave them a chipset that allowed them to digest the Western culture more, uh, mm, let it marinate through their bones or whatever. Um, next up, point number seven, Andrew. I think, all right, so this, this point number seven, I'm going to have to address Chinese men and chi Chinese parents because I feel like we've had all these reasons of being like, oh, maybe there's something about Chinese women that feel this way or something. That, that. But I'm like, dude, like, we got we to gotta take some blame on if Chinese women don't like Chinese guys. I'm not saying there's not a bunch of other factors, but there has to be some conversation right right you're saying you can't point at all these different variables and then leave out the variable that uh involves self-accountability like, like like how many stories do we have of like heroic chinese men like how much are we told these stories when we're younger you know like how how often are we no it's yeah, either, I watch like, no Chan movies it's either mulan which is it was a female shout out to mulan or a monkey yeah. Sun Wukong. Yeah, and, and I'm but not going to lie. Monkey or and, and I'm not going to lie. Some Jackie Chan movies, the earlier Jackie Chan movies, it was hard to like... Here's the thing about Jackie Chan, which I love Jackie Chan. Love Jackie Chan. But I don't think it really like impacted the women the same way it impacted the guys. Right. And, right. and obviously, he was more romantic in his Asia-only releases versus his uh, Western right, roles. Right, Otherwise, he was kind of like this uh, indestructible like martial arts... Baymax. Gummy ball that yeah. would just fly everywhere and do all this crazy stuff and be a comedian. Like, Jackie Chan was part comedian, so it wasn't, like, as sexy, even though I'm a big fan of Jackie Chan, by the way. But I guess what I'm saying is, like, there's just something about growing up as a Chinese guy where if the parents don't come down, if the parents don't know how to adapt to America and can't teach you how to be more American and you don't find a way to become more American then you don't end up acting more American and that will play against you in the dating market in America. Makes sense? Logical, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to sum up what you're trying to say in point number seven, I've seen in terms of sociality, probably the most maladapted Asian guys be Chinese. Dude, yeah, David, how many times have we seen this where you met a Chinese girl or an Asian girl, this happens to all Asians, but maybe particularly Chinese, who seems pretty well adapted and then you talk, and then she talks about her family, and they're always like, "Oh, but my brother's really nerdy. He's really shy. He's quiet." And you're like, "Oh, like are you close yeah. to your brother? Like what's going on?" She's on like, her twenty third boyfriend. Her bro her bro little brother has never had a girlfriend. Yeah, 
Yeah, like literally, like this girl's like a pretty girl. She has a great social life. She can date almost any type of guy she wants. Packed Google Calendar. Packed Google Calendar, lots of events. And her brother, little brother, or older brother, is like a nerd, dates one or two people in his life. And I'm just like, I know that happens in all families, but it seems like it happens a lot in the And, and you know, community. this is a great time to mention, guys. I got an email sign up in the, com uh, in the description below if you guys want to check out potentially some Asian male self-improvement premium content that is going to be, you know, basically designed to directly address these issues within any community, but maybe, you know, specifically uh, impacting the Chinese-American community the strongest. Mm. Um, check it out. Ultimately... Here's my major takeaway, man. Um, life is variable. Every Asian is variable. Every Asian is arriving in a different situation. But I think the weirdest thing about being Chinese is any archetype that you think of, because there's so many of us on earth and so many of us in the West, like any community you slip into, you could like be surrounded by like 100,000 people just like yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? Whereas like in other Asian communities, you might like have one cousin who's this way, the cool guy cousin, the nerd guy cousin, the hustler cousin. And it's all like everybody might be like balancing each other out a little bit in terms of like camaraderie or coaching. But I feel like in the Chinese world, it could end up like there's five male cousins, but they're all just like gaming together all the time. Right. Right. So and that's like a function of the size. Mm. Because when you have the size and the uh, the critical mass, it allows each archetype to be like more uh, siloed into its own lane. So I guess... Uh, ultimately I will say this, man. I think that for, I do think it's getting better, but I do think that this OP Andrew is referring to the Bay area. He's 26 years old. So that puts him in the age range, in my opinion of Chinese America, that's kind of in the lost zone, which is like 25 years old to 50 years old. For this reason, Andrew, if you're 25 to 50 and you're Chinese American, and you guys will notice this, even if you guys aren't Chinese, but amongst your Chinese American friends, there's just a lot of confusion about what a guy is supposed to be or even how the girls are supposed to represent being Chinese. Right. So I guess, Andrew, how do, how do people deal with this? Or do, would you just recommend that the OP just continue to date non-Chinese women? Well, I remember at the end of his post, he says, uh, I'm really trying to understand this phenomenon because I'm Chinese. And truth be told, I want a Chinese partner. I want someone who deeply understands Chinese culture. Well... If you're talking about people who deeply understand Chinese culture, you might as well get an immigrant girl, a fob, like an international student. And, and there's a, a lot- Because they're going to understand Chinese culture the most. That's what they learn over there in school. Yeah, but I think that I would recommend to him, what are you even talking about in terms of Chinese culture? If he's from the Bay and he's like, oh, I'm just talking about like old Toysan culture from Chinatown, that's going to complicate it, right? If he doesn't want to get into- some other provinces, right? Yeah, I just want a really hot Chinese girl that wants to eat dim sum twice a week in Inner Sunset. And yeah, that's all I want. I'm like, all right, man, that's very specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too specific. And, and I always tell Chinese guys, man, it's true that we're not as like fancy preppy sometimes as like Koreans and Japanese people, Japanese jazz bars, Korean golfers, right? Maybe we're not having as much arena club you know, street style fun as like Southeast Asians. Maybe we're not as extroverted or socially calibrated as Filipinos, but we still got to understand that we have to have like value in ourselves and that we could be, you could mix and match. Yeah. That, that's honestly the benefit of being more amorphous. Mm. Like you're not like siloed in one of those lanes. It's more like life is more of a pick your own choice adventure. Well, guys, uh, you know, hope, I know it sounds like a controversial topic, by the way, guys, a lot of great Chinese women out there, very proud of their culture, like Chinese guys, love Chinese guys. But no doubt that this has been a conversation that I've even had before I saw this Reddit post with other Chinese guys before. And I think it's just that the feeling is that a lot of Chinese women, good looking Chinese women that are born in America, that are Americanized, do not prefer Chinese men, which it would be nice if more of them at least did a little bit more. And... Again, a lot of guys have had this conversation in a anecdotal way. There's really no stats or science behind it that we can really point at other than the Mary outrage, I guess. But ultimately, guys, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Please, Chinese ladies, weigh in as well. Check out the email list in the description, guys, if you want some more info. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.